Welcome back to another trading video from F45 Trading. Uh, today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about your trading routine and uh, some of the things that you should be implementing into your daily setups before you get into uh, trading the markets for that day. A lot of new traders understand that it's very good to have a routine and have a setup that you can stick with and have a itemized checklist that you can run through to guarantee your success or at least maximize it uh, to its fullest potential. But not a lot of traders understand what to put in there and what they should be focusing on. So today I'm going to just talk to you uh, about the few things that I do in my daily routine and hopefully that you can uh, take some of this uh, and implement it into your own style and hopefully it'll help you out a little bit. So first off, you should be looking at you know, which markets do we want to trade? Do we want to look at trading the stock markets, the forex markets, commodity markets? You know what is trending for that day or that week and which one's going to guarantee the most success. From there, you look at, okay, is it a good time to be trading? Uh, you know, this particular market that I'm looking at, is it seasonally a good time to trade? You know, am I looking at, uh, let's say the, um, I don't know, the wheat markets, you know, the gold market or, uh, you know, Euro USD market or something and uh, you know seasonally speaking it's going down but I'm looking for bullish moves well that's probably not going to be falling in line with what we're trying to do so you want to make sure that seasonally it's a good time to uh, to be taking the trade also is the market market trending uh, is it going straight up or straight down uh, is it going sideways and consolidating you know what is the market actually doing uh, that you're looking to trade and are you expecting it to do something uh, uh, similar in the future or are you expecting that trend to change you know what are we looking at here for each setup so you've got to make sure you implement that you know overall higher time frame analysis as well too is something that is absolutely critical getting out of the 15 minute charts one hour charts and this goes without saying i'm sure everybody out there knows that you want to be looking at out to a, a daily if not a weekly time frame just to make sure you're in line with the overall trend uh, and not that you get blindsided by a, a reversal out of the blue when you thought uh, the price was going to continue uh, in the direction that you got in. So very important to um, be cognizant of that. The other thing you want to make sure before you get into your trades, especially if you're day trading, is some news events that are happening. Uh, even if you're swing trading, let's say you get into a swing trade on a Monday and you've got some major economic news coming out on a Thursday that all of a sudden fluctuate, uh, fluctuates price uh, out of your favor and stops you out. You want to make sure you, you try to minimize those types of unexpected events um, on a regular basis. So go through and analyze the news and figure out which news fits for your particular market that you're trading in for that day. Uh, what days of the week you should be trading in, um, typically speaking. We, there are better days than others in the market. And so are, are you just going in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and trading all week long? Or are you selective on your setups, which you should be doing? Uh, and even bre breaking it down even further, what time of day should we be entering these trades? Uh, you know, not all times of the day, 24 hours of the day is favorable to get into the markets. Uh, the markets move in um, uh, large ranges throughout the day and it's better to be part of the uh, time of day when you're capturing those large ranges instead of the small tight little ranges that you can get uh, you know after hours. Um, also uh, very important to analyze you know what are your targets and you get your targets off of the higher time frame analysis as well you know how much do I think I can make on this trade versus how much risk is associated with it and I'll get uh, into that in a little bit more detail in a couple other in another video uh, series that I'm planning on doing uh, but I will touch on it today. And then, you know, are these trades in line with my overall goals? This is very important. So are you uh, looking for 20 pips this week, 50 pips, 100? Uh, you, you know, what are your weekly goals that you're trying to accomplish? And uh, not only that, but, you know, have I just come in and I've made my weekly goal and I'm going back in again? You know, is this my third or fourth time in the markets this week when my trading plan says that I should only be in two or three maximum trades for the week? Am I revenge trading? You know, did I just lose a series of 10 trades? I'm going back in again and maxing out my leverage. These are account killers for some people and you gotta be very careful. It happens all the time. Revenge trading is a very difficult thing to overcome. But if you have a proper routine and a proper checklist that you can start uh, uh, you know, ticking off all of the uh, items on that list, then you can uh, minimize the chance of revenge trades from occurring. Um, and then going in and once you actually do enter the trade, how do you manage that trade? 
you know, are you able to sit in front of your computer all day long and watch this trade develop? Uh, are you in meetings all day? Or are you in school all day? Or uh, do you have other obligations that you have to go through and, and worry about? Uh, do you have to do it all off of your phone? You know, how are you going to be able to properly manage this trade? Do you have the right stops and, and targets and, and partial profits uh, in your trade setups as well? Uh, all very, very critical factors. And uh, the big thing is, uh, you know, are you over trading? I can't stress this enough. The one thing that especially newer traders will fall victim to is thinking that they need to be in the markets all the time, every day, every minute. And I can tell you from personal experience, it does not work. Um, you definitely will get lucky on a couple of trades and you will win a few, uh, but you're probably more than likely going to lose a lot more. And what also happens with over trading is over leverage. And again, uh, when you start getting a series of bad trades all in a row that are highly leverage, leveraged, uh, it destroys your account in a very big hurry. So you gotta make sure that uh, you're very aware of that. And again, put it in your trade plan, put it in your checklist. Is, am I over trading? How many times am I allowed to trade per week? Set a number, stay within that number, okay? Now I'm going to uh, get into the charts here uh, and show you a little bit more uh, specifics on some of these topics that I brought up with you today. Uh, so we'll uh, jump in that now. And please always, um, if this video helps you out, it would really uh, help me out a lot if you would like the video, leave a comment, uh, share it out to uh, some of your friends and just kind of generate a little bit more traffic to my um, uh, YouTube page. I would really appreciate that. So uh, anyway, let's get into the charts now and uh, we'll get after this. Okay, so here are all of the trading points that you should have in your checklist when you're going to execute a trade. Uh, so I've just sort of itemized this. Again, maybe you're already adopting some of these in your trading plan um, and you don't need to worry about it, but maybe there's a few in here that you never even thought to think of that you could certainly add in. The whole goal and idea behind this is for you to develop a routine, you know, something that you can execute with um, a surety that you've covered all your basis points and there's nothing left to take to chance and that uh, if everything falls in line with your checklist and your daily routine that you can execute this trade with utmost confidence so again what does that look like well what markets am i trading this week you know are you trading the commodity markets are you in uh, you, you know like there's a bunch of commodity markets this is mt4 you know are you trading orange juice this week are you trading copper are you trading cocoa uh, are you trading coffee you know, what are you trading? Do you want to trade Forex or maybe crude oil or gold? Um, are none of those markets lining up right now because uh, they're all in consolidation or they're all just acting haywire? So, well, maybe we should look at some stock markets. Whatever the instrument is that you're looking for, make sure you um, know what markets you're going to be looking at this week and why you're going to be looking at them. Once you've figured out a market, uh, you can go on to step number two. So let's just check these. So basically, this is, again, this is just a checklist. So what you need to do, you go through and, one, identify the market that you're going to trade for the week. Number two, when is a good time to be trading this market? So again, maybe we're looking at, let's say, the oil market. And we see, well, oil is trending very nicely. I think I can see an opportunity in this market uh, let's go in and look at this a little bit further. So you've identified your uh, market. Is it a good time? Look at the seasonals. Is seasonally speaking the months of, you know, between May and August uh, very, very bearish for oil and you're looking for bullish setups? Well, that doesn't always typically go in line with the seasonal. So you got to make sure that you have uh, the best times of the year to trade that market and make sure that falls in line with your overall goals as well too you know what are you trying to achieve and where is it uh, where are you trying to uh, take your entry and take your profits in that market does the seasonal align with that okay so once you've checked off that then move on to step number three what is the higher time frame analysis telling me you know so this is the crude oil market the crude oil market you know it, it, this is this is just a 15 minute time frame uh, but go out to the daily uh, go out to the weekly, go out to the uh, monthly and, and see what are we doing? Where is price currently? Get out of the five minutes and 10 minute time frames because there's a lot of noise that goes on at those levels. If you really want to get serious about trading and, and go in line with the directional bias that gets these massive moves, see this massive move down that we have? Uh, that was about uh, 30, $40 uh, in price action that you could have captured. You know, again, what is the market doing? But if you're in a 15 minute time frame, 
uh, you may be seeing this thing there, uh, you know, doing a, a very small retracement. Like after these two big months down, you see this small retracement, you think, oh, price is going to reverse and we're going to go higher, uh, only for price to fall another $20 uh, lower and, and stops you out and you're wondering what's going on. Get out of the lower time frames and stay in the higher time frames, and that will increase your success probability exponentially. Okay, <clears throat> so make sure you know what the higher time frame analysis is telling you. Do you have your goals picked out? What's your target? Where is it potentially going to go to? And once you've determined that, then check that off and move on to the next step. So now you have to determine, um, you know, is this going to be a swing trade? Am I going to be holding this for uh, a week, two weeks, a month? Is this going to be a day trade? Am I just scalping this? Um, so first of all, pick off what, uh, how long you want to stay in the trade for. Um, potentially how long could it run to the target, take the run to the targets. You know, if you're on a, on a daily chart and you're looking at something, you know, a thousand pips out, then chances are it's going to take you a few days to get there, maybe a few months. So make sure you can weather that storm. But if you're looking at trading, um, you know, a, a week or even a day, it's always a good practice just to jump on to, you know, Forex Factory is a good one. Uh, and, uh, and I'll just write that down here uh, now as well too. So, you know, just in case you need a good one. <clears throat> I use Forex Factory. There's a number of good ones out there that uh, that you can check out for yourself, but, but that's a good one. Uh, and find out what big news events are coming up for that week. So let's say I'm trading the, um, the, the uh, GBP USD, and there's all of a sudden a monetary policy statement coming out for the GBP that week. Well, chances are uh, it's going to fluctuate my price, and it may... Uh, take me out um, at a, a at an improfitable time, unprofitable time frame. Uh, so I want to avoid that. So you know maybe there might be a better pair to trade that week that doesn't have a monetary policy uh, announcement that um, <clears throat> I don't have to worry about. And and really what we're trying to alleviate here is, is, is maintaining stress free trades. So just make sure that you know what's on the economic news front because um, that can seriously affect the outcome of of a trade. What day of the week is best to trade? You know, a lot of times uh, there aren't always the uh, aren't always favorable trades uh, to take. You know, Mondays uh, on a long weekend aren't the best days to trade. Typically, markets are pretty quiet. You know, Fridays right before a long weekend again, typically pretty quiet. Um, you know, is it uh, a day where you want to go long and uh, you know the weekly profile sets out and it starts going the opposite way on you? You know, it starts going, turning bearish. You know, is that a good time to get into the market? You know, what are the best days to trade? You know, again, go back to step number three. If I've got major economic impact news events coming up on the on Thursday and Friday of the week, well, probably a better time to trade that market would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So figure that out. On top of that, what's the best time of day to trade? Um, you know, do I want to be going in and putting my trades in at the end of the day, uh, setting up for the next day? Do I want to be going in, putting my trades in in the morning? What time in the morning? You know, do I do London Open? Do I do New York Open? What's the best? What's better? All of that stuff you need to weigh out. And that, you, that you, you know, I'm not going to tell you what, uh, uh, what's the best because it's different for every market, of course. Uh, but you need to study that and analyze that in the different um, uh, pairs that you trade. And so uh, that's definitely that something that should be on your radar screen and always something that you look into before you execute that trade. When is the best time to be placing this trade during the day? Uh, what are my targets and my risks? So, you know, again, I'm on a, on a weekly chart here right now. Um, and maybe I'm looking for price to come, I don't know, all the way down here. And that's my target and to sweep below the slope. Well, that's great. But, um, you know, price could fluctuate in the meantime before it gets down there. So how much am I willing to risk? Um, now, uh, I'm going to do another video, as I mentioned before, on, on uh, you know, on how much, you know, risk versus how much uh, leverage, uh, excuse me, how much uh, reward uh, to work with and, and what would fall in line with your overall goals. So uh, save this one. Uh, I'll save this one for the next video series that I'm going to do. And I'll talk about that a little bit about that. But you got to make sure you have those numbers already set out. You know, again, am I looking for 100 pips on this trade? If so, how much am I willing to risk of my overall account to get that? Am I risking 10 pips, 30, 20 pips, 30 pips? What is my overall risk reward ratio? Is it a one to one, a two to one, a five to one? 
Uh, so uh, figure that out ahead of time. Have your numbers put together and have that in your trading journal as well too, guys. Uh, trading journals are very important. Have the numbers put in so you know exactly what to expect. How much can I possibly uh, gain on this trade if everything works out according to plan? How much could I possibly lose if everything um, you know goes to hell in a handbasket? Okay. What tr uh, is this in, uh, trade in line with my weekly and monthly goals? Okay, so very important. You know, if my weekly goal is to just make 50 pips that week, well, why would I go in and target 100 pips, you know, for a range? I mean, that's not in line with my trading goals. Have I already made that 50 pips for the week and I'm going back in again just because I think I see a setup and I think, well, hey, well, you know, what's better than 50 pips? Uh, 75 pips and I go in again and again. You know, what's my trading goals? Have a, have a goal and stick to it. And that is the way that you can become successful trading over time by always having a target to shoot for. Don't go in there and just start trading blindly and, you know, think, oh, great, I made 100 pips, but I lost 80 there on the next trade. And then the next pip, uh, a trade, I made 30 pips. And then the one after that, I lost 50. And just bouncing all over the place. Have a clear goal in mind. And then once you hit that goal for the week, stop trading. Okay. Very, very important. So, um, make sure your trade before you execute it is in line with your overall goals. Managing your trade. So after I execute the trade, uh, I mentioned earlier, how are you going to manage that trade? You know, do I have to uh, run out of my office and, uh, and, and, you know, again, go to school or do I have a full day of work ahead of me and I don't have a, a chance to look at my phone or look at a computer screen in order to figure out if this trade is going against me and to cut my losses and to get out of the trade before it hits my full stop? Uh, is the trade screaming in, in my direction and I need to, and I, did, I forgot to set my uh, partial profits and I need to take something off of the table before uh, and, and pay myself uh, before this thing comes and reverses and takes out my stop? Uh, you know, what's going on while this trade is occurring and where are you going to be and how are you going to properly manage this? Are you going to be able to sit in front of your computer and do this properly or do you have to run it all from your phone, you know, off of a, a, a mobile app? Uh, is that conducive to your overall trading goals? So figure out ahead of time how you can properly manage the trade and plan for that. Am I taking this trade for the right reasons? Um, so, you know, again, am I revenge trading? This is a very serious thing. Have I just come off of a series of five losses and I'm going in for my sixth one just because I'm trying to make back money that I lost? You know, am I angry at the market? I'm going to get my revenge and, and go back in and, and take whatever was taken from me. You know, why am I taking this trade? Does it fall in line with my goals and my plan? You know, is this a managed trade that I'm, I'm clearly setting out, uh, you know, a 20, 30, 40, 50 pip uh, reward factor. And that is exactly in line with my weekly goals. And this is my first trade of, or the second trade of the week. And that's the other thing too. Have a set number of trades that you're going to take. You know, um, don't over trade. Um, I'm going to talk about this more in, in a minute, but, um, you know, have a number of trades that you're going to take. Like, for instance, cap it off at three. I'm going to sit down each week and I'm going to look for three solid setups to look at and I'm not going to take any more. If I lose uh, two of those trades, I only have one left, uh, to, uh, one trade left for that week to take and that is it. I can't go over that. So, you know, am I taking this trade for the right reason? What's What previously happened in the week um, to bring you to this point and, and should you be taking that trade? Um, are you taking it for the right reasons? So identify that and, uh, and figure that out ahead of time. This is a very, very important uh, piece of this whole trading plan as well too. Make sure you're taking those trades for the right reasons. Am I over trading? Am I rushing? Am I uh, putting too much leverage on each trade? Uh, this, is, this is huge. And this, like I said before, will crush accounts. Um, this, this takes, uh, you know, a, uh, a losing week to a terrible week to, uh, I just blew my account this week. Um, <clears throat> over trading is our, our absolute account killers, you know, going in 10, 20, 30, 40 times a day in, in some cases and just trading because you see prices going in your favor and, uh, you know, you're jumping in and out of trades all the time, <clears throat> you know, trying to get a couple bucks here and a couple bucks there. I'm telling you, that will not lead you to a successful journey in trading. I promise you it won't. You have to have strict guidelines when trading. You have to be taking those trades for the right reason. You have to be identifying the targets uh, and the profit areas. You have to be uh, uh, managing your risk accordingly. That is the difference between a losing trader and a professional trader. Okay, very, very, um, very, very important. 
and am I risking too much on this trade? You know, did I just come off of a series of losers and should I be maybe reducing my risk? So if I do take a full stop out, maybe this is my third trade of the week, my last trade, and I take another full stop out uh, that it doesn't cost me um, another huge uh, uh, um, a bit of profit, uh, you know, and, and reduce my gains from last week, for instance. So am I risking too much? That's what you have to ask yourself. Figure out what your risk reward ratio is and stick within it. <clears throat> Uh, is this a recovery trade? So a little bit more of, of what I alluded to. Um, there's certain ways that you can manage risk. So just because I have, let's say I take three trades for the week uh, and I lose on two, it does not mean I can't be profitable for that week, but it all comes down to risk reward uh, and, and leverage. So uh, is this a recovery trade? So how much should I be re uh, risking on this? Uh, has this, uh, have I just come off of a loss and should I be reducing my trade? Uh, right, so this this kind of falls a little bit more in line with with number ten as well too, uh, but something uh, very very important that you need to be asking yourself: um, what is the status of this trade, uh, and and then previous trades for the week? You know, is this a recovery trade or is this the first trade of the week that I'm taking? And, and you know, I can go buck wild on it and and uh, try to shoot for my profit target with one trade. You know, what happened the previous trades uh, before I got to where I am right now, and should I be executing this trade based off of that information? Okay. Have I set my partial profit targets and do I have a backup plan? So all I mean by this is, have I set multiple areas for profit taking? Um, you know, if I have a goal of, let's say, 100 pips for the day or for the week, a very, very good rule of thumb and a very good practice to get into doing is paying yourself along that 100 pips. So have set up multiple trades. And I, I go back through my YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about this, uh, but I did a video on um, taking partial profits, which is very, very powerful to staying profitable and always paying yourself because once you've paid yourself, they can't take that away from you. So make sure you pay yourself along the way. If my target's 100 pips, I want to make sure I'm paying myself at 20, 30, 50, 80 pips along the way because I, there is nothing that's going to guarantee that I'm going to, that price is going to run up to my full uh, target. So rather than having price run all the way up 90 pips to your target and it just fails to get to that 10 pips and it runs all the way back down and stops you out uh, and you lose money on the trade, it's a good rule of thumb to set partial profit targets and have a backup plan. So if this trade does reverse on me, have I moved my stock to break even after I've taken my initial profit target, right? All things to consider and all um, uh, areas that you need to look at when setting up a trade. Uh, again, talking about the stop loss, always have a stop loss and have a predefined stop loss that you do not move. Do never increase your stop risk. Never. If a trade is coming against you, never increase it. Always leave it where it's at. You can certainly adjust it uh, if you feel that you were wrong on the initial, but just because price is coming down to your, your, your area uh, doesn't mean that you just start moving it down and moving it down or moving it up and moving it up or whatever it may be. Um, have a stop loss and stick to it. But once that trade goes into profit and you have taken profits off the table, it's always a good practice to move that stop to break even. And then that way they can't come back against you. Even if the trade is wrong and you are incorrect in your overall analysis, you've got money and you're taking it and they can't take that away from you. Uh, so it's always, always important to properly manage your stop loss. Okay, and then go back through and just do a quick itemized inventory count. Is everything checked off? Have I skipped something in here? Was there something in here that I couldn't answer uh, at the moment and it required more analysis and more study? Um, you know, where am I in, in this, uh, you know, 13 point, 14, 15 point checklist? Uh, do I have things in here that I couldn't cross off because it didn't fall in line with, uh, with my overall um, uh, process? So go back through and find out, is everything checked off? And if it is, go ahead and execute that trade, okay? So this is just a very, very brief, um, again, uh, you know, a, a few points that I use. There's obviously several more points that I uh, implement with my trading. Um, and uh, I, I'd love to share those with you guys, but I'm, I'm, it goes way beyond in depth of what I want to cover here today. Um, so if you want to check those out, please go ahead and, and jump on my website at f45trading.com. Uh, send me a DM, throw some comments in on this, uh, and I'd love to, to help you out as, 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 with whatever I can. Uh, and answer your questions. Again, this goes way, way more detail. So if you are serious about looking at setting up a solid trading plan for your trading, 
um, let me know and I can certainly help you guys and, and work with you on that. But hopefully this gives you a couple of good ideas to uh, look at. And uh, if you like this video, guys, again, please give me a thumbs up, send me a comment, share it out uh, to some of your friends uh, and, and help get the word out a little bit. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, good luck trading out there.